But that's interesting because, like, I, I don't think I've heard that term, ma- uh, narrative mandala. But it was something about, like, that term, I don't know, um, for me, like, was crazy. Anyways, uh, it was interesting, you know, um, and it's actually recently, he was the one that, that like, um, that it, there's some, some tool, um, I'll give you the link to it. And then you put like an image in it and it creates the, uh, using a hyperbolic, uh, honeycomb. And there's different patterns that you can play with. And then like these things come up and, um, I didn't play with it for a while. And I was doing the, the, the artwork with, uh, within the vacuum. And I liked what he did. So basically, you send him something. And, and so I, I sent him some um, pieces of um, paper for my notebook when I was doing early like sketches for what I was thinking of for the narrative mandala. And one was called Sunflower Sutra, which is which a reference to a, a Allen Ginsberg poem where Allen Ginsberg and um, Jack Kerouac are like sitting by like the railroad station. Hey, what's up within the vacuum? And they're like him and Alan Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac are sitting by like a band, like a like a, a crappy down, down and out abandoned like railroad station. Like hungry, they're hitchhiking, out of money, don't even have money for like booze, and they're just like sitting there. And I think it was Alan who was who was talking about like getting a real job and then like there's no money in poetry and just like ready to give up and Jack Kerouac I forgot how he said it but basically all you're just whining and crying and then he like he's like look at that and then he's like and then he goes into this whole like thing about like the sunflower sutra he's like look at that sunflower like he doesn't carry cracks through the the concrete and he's singing to the sun and he goes into like this whole like rant like stream of consciousness thing and then late, later, you know, uh, uh, Alan Ginsberg writes Sunflower Sutra. But anyways, uh, I always I always like the title of Sunflower Sutra. And I and I always um, reference it in my mind to to like, uh, I guess, like the the creative plurk struggle. Because <laughs> I always go through that own my own cycle. Like, oh, uh, I mean, you know, of like, oh, um, whatever it is, like creatively I'm doing, or or just you know, kind of like uh, different different things, and then like the then the sunflower sutra like unfolding of of like this this um, creativity that's like embedded everywhere, you know. And anyways, so I use that, and I use. Um, in the Valley of Novelty uh, is a reference to Terence McKenna talk, and and this kind of like uh, I reference that because of like I, the visible landscape, kind of like the patterns, and which would be like the landscape of, of what we're talking about, or the ecology of the mind. And so, anyways, those two, those two things that I sent to you within the vacuum, and uh, later. When when you start doing the the mandalas from from the uh, words, um, I I was like okay let's do let's do a double blind test like we're talking about like a, a particle and, and a wave and then like it was funny that like the mandalas like reflected like that like it was just like an intuition to kind of like just arbitrary like split split it like that and then like name it like that and then like it was funny that the patterns like reflected what what i was like oh let me just do that and see what happens i'm like oh shit it's like two on the nose (laughs) that was just oh yeah man yeah how's it going within the vacuum hey everything good yeah i'm I'm, I'm eating something (laughs) sorry (laughs) yeah um (laughs) all good (laughs) You know, I'll, I'll take, um, wait, let me, let me do something first. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen mm-hmm. and, then, and then go into the narrative mandala. Oh, actually, both from the blue because uh, that kind of like 
started this whole weird thing. Anyways, go from the beginning. Because I like this, like, first, I don't know, I got, like, really into, um, Bolts from the Blue. It, once again, it's, like, another reference that I keep in my pocket. <laughs> and then, like, I throw, I throw it out to, to, uh, uh, Tinker Taylor. And I, I didn't know for sure, but I had, like, a feeling that he would enjoy it too meaning like he'll give me feedback on it right and so he gives me feedback and then like i then that's all i needed all i needed was like just a little a little encouragement and um so he kind of set, sets it up right here you know he's, he's talking about his some other stuff um but then he, he the kind of um, sphere um hyperbolic sphere that that we're talking about later but anyways so what's cool about uh, the bolts from the blue which is like this like artist intuition of of like some type of like scientific mathematical thing that becomes like uh you know in science like a, a mathematical like model you know and so anyways you know kind of kind of like the go from the cave paintings and i like the, i like the bifurcation so like right here is uh the first the venus um uh, which is the stone uh statue of venus but like on the back it has strings and then the strings actually are the, the, a scale like an actual scale that doesn't become like known to everybody else until like you know uh, later on in in our cultural history but you know that musical scale exists and people were using it and even documenting it like before it was like recorded how we we commonly record um artists and shaman were playing with the scale and recording it and passing it to people before it got standardized in that sense like that um and then the same thing with with, with these um the bouts from scotland which are the the platonic uh, solids um which which was cool and then like mixing those together which were like um uh, mixing uh, what well, me and the, within the vacuum we're doing and you know the why I like the first period is my my little guy right here the little uh, bee face mushroom uh, shaman and I like this guy because you know if you read Terence McKenna and in Food of the Gods um, so the cave painting has you know the typical in the well lit area um, the the savanna and I think it's like they're hunting bison or something like that right and so it's like a, a, a scenery of of uh, hunting scenery and you know it's probably it's probably their hunting grounds it probably was a map too of like where we're a good place to like you know do, get stuff at right if you knew how to read the map anyways but in the darkest deepest corners of the cave was this guy and you know this is like the first image that comes out that is like not naturalistic in in the normal sense and this is like a dreamtime character and then if you go into like the uh, uh ancient aborigines dreamtime stuff uh you know they they have these kind of like entities too that have like similar patterns or whatever but anyways you go from my little bee shaman guy and then and then we go to the platonic solids and so then i'm like okay this is kind of cool and then, you know, these are kind of like signs that we see throughout history. And then we get we get these, which are, are, are kind of like first first little points, but then now they're constellations and they become like greater concepts and, and greater symbols to, to communicate across uh, space and time. And so that's when I, I get to like, okay, uh, let me let me start really like playing it with the ideas that we have already right here is the dynamic energy budget and i'm like okay yeah the fractals let's, let's get a little weird because you know i'm always getting weird and so you know i'm playing around with, with different designs and i'm putting it through the thing and i'm like okay this is cool now we got something going on here and then so you know i go to my little a uh, koken who who's a little character that um um uh, uh, curry hobo designed and i told him um 
just this idea that I had and then he created this character and I related to this like dream time character that I that came to me one time in a dream and then I, I put that in here and I'm like oh my god this is like a map uh, like you know like some type some type of like game that it unlocked and I'm like okay so like the patterns are, are, are ancient right there they're from um, Aztec and and so like you know these jeweled like board games and then like there's there's these circles where you can put stuff in these areas right and they correspond to you know coordinating the you know the circle the square the atomic stuff so i was like okay this is cool and that's when we got really crazy with this stuff and so i'm like okay this is the Imaginarium uh, spore point for the present shock, narrative collapse, quantum psychology, the non-local self, and steps towards ecology of minds. Um, and then I put that in the Sunflower Sutra, and it looks like it's like a little molecule, and I'm like examining in it for its properties, right? And then I put it in that thing, and then I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. And then you know you get different designs. Those was those ones are crazy. Yeah, and and, and, wow. it, and it just keeps it's on amazing, getting man. it keeps on getting crazier. Weirder and weirder. Yeah, more fractal, more fractal, more fractal, more fractal. And uh, you know, here's the other one. This this is the the annotation, and so this is like the frequency, and then I took the particle, and I'm like, okay, let me put it in the valley of novelty, right? <laughs> yeah and this one like it looks like a frequency like like it has like some energy to it you know like oh my god yeah, yeah. what's going on with this one you know you know that when i started to make these uh -huh. things uh i made a little book i shared just with friends and something like that that was called uh fundamental structures for the creation of new worlds oh nice <laughs> <laughs> i have it some some there <laughs> I, I have to find it yeah oh yeah it. it was a little group with these uh subatomic particles drawings and it, it was yeah just like that and it became a, <laughs> a world now <laughs> yeah look at it and like that's that's what like this this one is like these are um, engineering and constructing, orchestrating, you know, the different worlds <laughs> that we could play in, you know, and then do these these different things. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, and this is the yeah, this is the bolt in the blue design. And then, I, oh, you know, halfway through, I was sharing some of the stuff from bolt to the blue, and I was like, oh. A bolt from a blue is a Satori from uh, from within the vacuum. <laughs> you know, like those are like you know, like uh, uh, symbiotic words. <laughs> like it's a different way to say it. Uh, so then, like I like this one. This is like kind of like chill. Uh, <laughs> chandelier design. I remember one time I was at this like three day rave and and okay, this one this is the funny one because. Everybody was all like, oh, we're not going to get... We try to get mushrooms before we go to the rave, right? And everybody okay. strikes out. Everybody's striking out. And then I tell everybody, don't worry, we'll get mushrooms there. And they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, don't worry, I'll find it. I'll just sense it. Like, I'll get my spidey sense or whatever. <laughs> and then, and so, <laughs> sure enough, I'm like, you know, I, I go in and I make friends and, and then I find... Uh, this guy who, who has mushrooms and and then so like he, we buy them and I pass them out there in chocolate and uh, at this time I was thinking a lot of mushrooms so like you know half an eighth in, in chocolate I was like damn yeah, whatever I, I ate it right away and then he's like oh do you want anything else I was like what else do you have and then he's like oh uh, and then it's like what are you looking for I'm like ecstasy so I, so I got some ecstasy and then I was like mm -hmm. uh, and then he's like Oh, do you want anything else? And I'm like, uh, do you have acid? And he's like, yeah. I'm 
like, damn. <laughs> and then in my head, I was like, fuck, I just ate all those mushrooms. And I'm like, I really want to do the acid. And then I'm like, fuck it, I got three days. And I'm like, okay, I'll get some acid. And he's like, oh, uh, do you have anything to put it on? And I'm like, no. And he's like, it's, it's liquid. It's liquid. And, and I'm like... Oh, and I'm looking for like, does someone have gum, gummy bears, anything? And, and everybody's like, no. And he's like, you gotta take it right now if you want to get, if you're gonna buy it. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, okay. And so I stick out my tongue. He drops it on my tongue, and he literally had energy of a tongue. And I'm like, I almost felt it like right away. I'm like, Whoo! I felt like Mario when he gets like the one up. I felt like two times bigger. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, oh my god, if everything feels so weird. <laughs> and, and then like so later you know the thing goes on and like it was a great night right and then like i was walking to another tent and, and i kind of like people had artwork and i and i keep on like tripping on like how did they do this i want to go find the tent or the people that did this artwork because they're like suspending the chandelier like in space and i can't see how they're like so holding it up and then like, and then I'm like dance, and then I look and I'm, I'm like, fuck, this is crazy. How did they do this artwork? It was the fucking moon. <laughs> <laughs> the moon had like transformed so much that I was like, oh my god, it's a great piece of artwork. <laughs> look at that chandelier. How did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah. Oh shit. And it, it, it was kind of like this, but like even crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to the forest yesterday. Uh, just get a couple of hits and sit there, and was watching the trees. I just just share with you a, a a picture I took from some trees. Oh yeah. Over. Yeah. What makes me, you know, like impressed me is how such complexity mm -hmm. is put it uh, in a such order order at way right yeah because it's like you can see like cables you know the roots what? look like cables and yeah and these and trees uh, and, and other species of trees like surround another one and create a new kind of you know, <laughs> art. <laughs> yeah. It's um, just amazing. I was, yeah. I was watching um, this uh, lecture that um, Tinker Taylor recommended, and it was the um, hyperbolic geometry of DMT oh, experiences. I, I have it. I yeah. have it open. I, I need to, to watch it. Yeah. yeah Is it and cool? So, yeah, it's cool. And so, like, in the lower levels, like, they, they talk about, like, you know, you. Uh, you um, which is like the U Euclidean um, matrix, and it's like the patterns that you see like embedded in everything, right? And they call it the, mm -hmm. um, the symmetry hotel, and it's and it's all those patterns, and um, you know, in bolts of the blue, in, in the second one, or no, actually in the Hambra, they talked about about there's like 17 different. Uh, tilt to the Euclidean symmetry to, to do the tiles, right? And, there's a, mm -hmm. and then that the Alhambra contains all of those, and and, and that's like the bolt because like they were uh, discovered or mapped out and mapped until like later, right? But the Alhambra has mm -hmm. has all of those those tilts and patterns in them, and so like that's what all of that that symmetry is. And there's this cool animation, and I even actually clipped it and played with it later. But it's also to to uh, illustrate the point. So that's those are two on, on a two D plane, two points, and then and then the tilt and the shape of the of the creating symmetry out of them, right? But then the hyperbolic one is three, right? And this is the ones that are playing over with the spear, and this is and this is the symmetry of, of those, and those are this is like the honeycomb ones, and it's kind of like endless. But basically. You just need, you know, your access point, which is which is like three points, and then from there you do the symmetry, and then and then it unfolds out like that. Yeah, and it's Infinite. endless, and it's like it's like the the uh, cauliflower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and then there's two, you know, if uh, he illustrated this by leaves, 
And if you look at uh, um, kale, and there's certain kale that's hyperbolic in their leaf pattern, and there's ones that are more Euclidean, um, and then they're more flat, right? And then you could see <laughs> it by the veins, of, like how they, they go. But uh, when you when you have the hyperbolic, it's it's infinite, infinite um, unfolding of, of yeah. worlds. Yeah. And it's really, yeah, you reproduce and yeah, reproduce. Yeah. yeah. And really, you it's need so you cool. need you need that like uh, symmetry of that two D pattern first, so then so then it creates that spear too. Uh, I think I think you get the more like harmonic structures, right? Out of out of those <laughs> ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything is is it's uh, allowed, you know. Like if you have those uh, first elements to work with, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, th there's no well, there's some some kind of rules, but yeah, you can you can you can jam around it and, and start to to make different things out of it. It's it's infinite. It really. I was thinking, and I was I was also sharing some articles with Solzist about uh, forest and. Uh, with the idea of how maybe you know like we we can we can use forest interaction mm -hmm. as templates for new economic models and i was uh putting attention on on the dynamic of the flow of energy and resources in forest and we should copy that <laughs> You know, forests are very success successful, and and the way they distribute their energy and resources is really effective and and, and successful. So, and, and it it is also th about the fractal and, and these kind of uh, mandala designs that you can see in forest. So it's everything connected. I'm working towards that direction now. I don't know why. <laughs> Just flowing. Yeah, you know, I need to look into this. But I was thinking, you know, part of um, the game, and maybe we'll do it next time. Um, we we create different things that 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 we have to do. Um, for the game. So for like instance, right now we just have like um, kind of like this process and and the elements uh, to create, you know, new designs or, or new little um, particles or waves that we can introduce into <laughs> in, into like the mandala, right, on the mosaic. <laughs> Um, and the, they, that, that is where we develop like the meaning, you know, I was, um, looking at that bead game. So, and I actually got inspiration from, from my friend, um, and her artwork. But, um, so all matter um, is composed of four elements and then, you know, uh, so we go into like the, 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 the solids, right? Um, and this is kind of like alchemy or whatever, but anyways, earth, water, uh, air, and fire. And then, like, that's the, the kind of, like, particle, uh, wave, terra, so, solar. And and then each element has its own neutral sphere. And and this is, like, um, kind of interesting in, in, like, constructing these elements of the game, right? These are, like, yeah. later, later beads of meaning. And then, like, <laughs> we're we're developing the the meaning or that first knot of like the access point, so that when we like toss it, it's like okay, this kind of means this, this, and that, uh, because it comes from the the book Bolt from the Blue, or, or it comes from this, or it comes from that, and then us uh, talking, and so like we're building the element, the the, the little um, jewel that later we could put in the in the mandala like later representing kind of like this this thing 